you're talking somewhere about movies, your favorite movies of all time, which I guess is um, Monty Python is the Holy Grail. You say it's the funniest movie ever, number one, right? Objectively speaking. Objectively speaking, or is it okay? It is objectively. It's funny. I, would, I mean, obviously, Monty Python were brilliant. Um, I'm sure some people also call you to task because, I mean, so many religious people I know become offended very easily. Um, and part of humor, you know, I remember George Carlin said in that uh, documentary a number of years ago called The Aristocrats, he said, you know, p people say humor is about shock, but really shock is just an uptown word for surprise. And so an awful lot of what is surprise, which I really thought was a great insight, a lot of what passes for surprise is shocking to people and, and therefore seen as sort of sacrilegious. How do you handle that? Certainly Monty Python, you know, blessed are the cheese makers, you know, I mean, they've certainly had their, their time and their way with, with sacred scripture as well. How do you reconcile that, uh, those two things? Well, first of all, notice I'm saying the Holy Grail and not the Life of Brian. Uh, Life of Brian's is, funny, though. Yeah, Life of Brian is very funny. The <laughs> only part I don't like about the Life of Brian is the, the crucifixion. That just bothers me. Right. Um, but you know, what people, uh, what I tell people about the Life of Brian is that it's about someone who is thought to be the Messiah, not Jesus. You know, so you're right. laughing, you're laughing at something else. The Holy Grail, on the other hand, the sort of quest for the Holy Grail in King Arthur, I think is hysterical. And there are a few scenes, very few scenes, that I think could be even remotely considered sacrilegious. Even when God appears, you know, uh, God gets the better of humanity. You know, God complains, and I talk about this in the book, you know, God complains about the Psalms being too depressing. Right. Funny, but I, I just think it's funny. And the other thing is I think humor is very subjective. Uh, right. I mean, you know, I, I shy away from movies that I think are sacrilegious, but I think that to your point, I think most religious people. Wait a second. I've been to you. So I've been to movies with you once in a while, when I think there have been some pretty, pretty racy sort of humor in it, and you've laughed out loud, right? Yeah, I don't mind racy. <laughs> I mean, I think, but what you're talking about in terms of sacrilegious, like, yeah, okay, yeah, sacrilegious. Um, but even that question is interesting because you know to talk about religious people not liking humor. You know, I think I think you could make the point that religious people, you know, are just as open to different kinds of humor as non-religious people. Yeah. Uh, but there is that stereotype of the kind of the dour, kind of uh, Puritan. Right. Uh, you know, H.L. Mencken's famous definition of a Puritan is, you know, someone who is terrified that somewhere someone is having a good time. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, but I, I, I think part of humor is very subjective, too. So what I find funny or surprising, someone else may find what? a little off color. Absolutely. What um, you mentioned in the book, which I thought was interesting, your distinction between good humor and perhaps humor that's not constructive. Um, is that because I know that's something we probably all of us in our lives might, or I, I certainly have struggled with sometimes, you know, what, where, at what point does this cross the line? I mean, good humor and bad humor. Good humor is any humor, I think, that's self-deprecatory, that builds people up, that helps people to sort of have a release from uh, the difficulties they're facing in life. Bad humor is any humor that makes fun of somebody, mm -hmm. that puts them down. Uh, you know, I said that someone laughing at your joke can make your day. Someone laughing at you can ruin your day. Uh, so I think we all have this kind of internal gauge uh, that says when we're engaging humor to mock somebody or put them down. And, uh, you know, my advice to people is if there's ever a, a concern or a question, you know, err on the side of safety. Now that you're but, well known as the Colbert show, the uh, Colbert Report uh, house chaplain, uh, it's certainly a show that deals a lot in parody a lot in satire, um, even of religious nature, and, and yet we know Stephen Colbert is, uh, you know, relatively open about being a practicing Catholic. Um, I mean, I know you're not his confessor or anything, but is that ever sort of a notion, or ever sort of a, a balance that you find hard to keep with a show like that when you're on a show like that, or the humor it does? Because I think there's an immense, there's an immense amount of truth telling going on on John Stewart's show, The Daily Show, and The Colbert Show as well, um, that I would, on some levels, believe is, it's not religious truth, but there's certainly uh, a truth that I think is, is needs to be out there an awful lot, and a lot of younger people especially, you know, would see it as right. such. Right, I mean, it, I think satire cuts through a lot of cant, basically. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I don't have a problem with it, because, you know, they're not forcing me to say anything, and I can... I and they're promoting your book. <laughs> um, my book. <laughs> No, I like going. I mean, I, I enjoy going on the show a lot, uh, and it's. I think it's a great tool for evangelization. And frankly, you know, if people can see a priest laughing at himself or you know telling a joke, it's. I think it's good. I think. Uh, I think it shows. It helps to show the Catholic Church in a in a kind of a different light. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I don't. I don't have any problems in terms of. Uh, 
what happens on the show because I'm I'm in charge of what I say, you know. So I would never make fun of somebody or put somebody down or you know, right? Color. So so that's that's really not a problem for me. 